will never be the same again. I can never return. I've closed the door. I will walk the path. I will run the race. And I will never be the same again. I will never be the same again. I can never return. I've closed the door. I will walk the path. I will run the race. And I will never be the same again. Fall like fire, so Amen and good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. It is great to see all of you here. And as we welcome all of you to this place, I know and I've heard all about people who have been watching with us online. So it's really important that we make sure that they feel welcome too. So will you all do me a favor and turn around and let's say good morning to everybody who's worshiping with us online. Good morning. 
I want everybody who worships with us online to know that, that I go through, I read all the comments afterwards, and I just want you to know that you are here with us even if you're not physically here. We can feel your presence, and we are so thankful that you are continuing to worship with us in whatever way you can. And so welcome to worship, all of you. And now, friends, the peace of Christ be with you all. And let's turn around and greet one another this morning. Good morning. And let us gather in a moment of prayer. Holy and loving God, we turn to you this morning. Lord, we ask that you pour your Holy Spirit upon us. Bless us with your spirit. Bless us with your power as we worship you in this place. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. And now we have some announcements. And so if you have an announcement, I know that we have a couple who do come forward at this time. I am going to direct your attention to this slide up on the screen right now. We have something really exciting that is going on. We here at Zion are offering a lay pastoral care training class. Now in the past, we've done some pastoral care training. It's only been done by me. It's been uh, organized through our, one of our UCC books that allows us to do this. But we actually are inviting in a professor and pastor who is coming in and he for three days is going to teach lay pastoral care training uh, here in this church in July. So if anybody has it anywhere within their heart to understand or to learn a little bit more about lay pastoral care training, this is the time. We are limiting attendance to 30 people. It is completely free. And the 30 people though, that's going to fill up pretty quickly because we've invited our sister churches as well to be a part of this. So make sure if you are interested at all, go on line, uh, that link, you can just go to our website and hit training, one of the tabs that says training, and it'll bring you, bring you right to the link. Do that, and how wonderful is it that we get to do this? And I'm even going to talk, as long as I make sure to get all the parts, I'm going to talk about this in my sermon about one of our church members doing some ministry that they didn't realize is ministry. All of us are ministers in our own way. All of us go out there into the world and we do ministry. So nobody uh, will be, you know, any less prepared if they take this class. It will only prepare you more to be a faithful Christian. Good morning. Good morning. (laughs) Um, So I just wanted to share the results from our chicken barbecue. It really was a great success, but I wanted to give you a little bit of lead up to the event. Last Sunday, John was a little bit nervous because (laughs) our goal was to try to sell 300 dinners. Last Sunday, we were at 197 when we called in our pre-sale count. Um, As of the morning of the event, we had increased to 231 chicken dinners, and John was still very nervous. Um, However, the event opened at 4 o'clock, and at 4.50 p.m., we sold all 300 dinners, and we probably could have sold 100 more. Um, So I want to sincerely extend my thanks to all of you that were able to attend, purchase tickets to help with the planning. And I have several thank yous to include before I share with you the results. Um, First of all, I'd like to extend my thanks to all of those folks that helped with the setup and the teardown for the event. Uh, My special thanks to the kitchen crew who did an amazing job on assembling 300 meals. I mean, that's just incredible. Uh, My sincere thanks to all of the Women's Fellowship who took the time to make those absolutely delicious baked goods. We have a few left over that will be available for sale in Cook Hall after service. Um, I'd like to, again, thank all of you that were able to attend. Um, And our planning committee used to be, you may have heard some of us in the past refer to the three J's, which is Jeff, John, and Joyce, who I don't think is here yet. There's Joyce. Hi, Joyce. Um, Well, our planning committee has grown, and um, we said we can't really call ourselves the three J's because now it includes Pastor, it includes Brianna, and it includes Jill Fowler. So what do we call ourselves? And Pastor came up with the perfect name for us. So we are now the PBJs, Pastor Brianna and Jays. <laughs> um, with all that said, um, as I mentioned, we did sell uh, 300 chicken dinners in total. Um, our, um, believe it or not, I'm just amazed by this. Our baked goods sale um, brought in, uh, blah, 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 where's the number, sorry, um, $202.75.
This also boggles my mind. We had event donations, people that just donated money at the event, totaling $195. <laughs> um, and grand total, drum roll please, the event brought in a total of $1,432.31 for the church. So thank you all. We, re we hope that you enjoyed the dinner. stand with us and sing. Lord of all creation, of water, earth, and sky, the heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high, God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy, the universe declares your majesty, you are holy. the 
And now it is time to light our peace candle. And as we light this candle, we pray for peace. Peace not only in our own lives, but peace in the world. So will you join your hearts with mine as we pray for peace. Holy and loving God, we turn to you this morning, Lord, and we pray for peace. We pray for your peace that surpasses all human understanding. We also pray for peace on earth. We pray for a day when everyone can treat each other with kindness and love and respect. We pray for a day when there can be compassion and understanding. We pray for a day when there's no longer hatred or war or violence or pandemic. Lord, we pray for a day of peace. May your peace prevail on earth. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Charlie. Hi, kids. Hi, Bernie. Hi, kids. Bernie, should we introduce our new friend? Yes, we should. Kids, this is our new friend, Finn. Isn't he cute? I'm not cute. I'm ferocious. (laughs) You look pretty cute to me, little buddy. Yeah, that's what everyone says. How is puppy life going, Finn? you want anything that I want, I get to play with my cats and my other dogs. I get to sniff new scents every day. Being a puppy is great. I don't remember much about being as little as you, but I bet it was fun. Bernie, I remember when Dad brought you home. I thanked him for giving me a puppy, and then I kind of took over from there. I have two big puppy sisters, Morgan and Zoe. I help them get their exercise every day. I'm sure you do, Little Finn. Well, Little Finn, what we do on Sunday mornings is teach the kids a lesson from the Bible. And I think you're going to like this lesson, Finn. In the Bible, there is a story about a man named Samuel. Samuel had to go find a new king of Israel, so Samuel went to the house of a man named Jesse and told Jesse that one of his sons would be named the next king of Israel. Jesse was excited by this news, so he went and got his sons. First, he showed Samuel the oldest son and the strongest son, but God said to Samuel that he was not the next king. Then, Jesse showed Samuel his next oldest son, but still, God said no. Finally, after going through a line of Jesse's sons, Samuel said, Is this all of your sons? Because God has not chosen any of them to be king. And Jesse said, Well, I have one more, the youngest one. He's out taking care of the sheep. Then Jesse called for the youngest son, David, and brought him to Samuel. And Samuel said, This is the one God has chosen. David will be the next king of Israel. It was the littlest one? The littlest brother got to be king? Yes, then. God chose the youngest brother to be the king of Israel because God judges not on the outward appearance, but on the inward appearance. Have you ever heard the saying, don't judge a book by its cover? Um, no. What's a book? Can I eat it? Oh no, don't do that. Believe me, the humans don't like when you eat their books. Well, the phrase, don't judge a book by its cover, is basically what God is saying to Samuel when God chose David to be king. Instead of judging people by what they look like, God knows our hearts, and God judges us based on who we really are, not on who the world can see. So we should all make sure that we're good people in our hearts? Or good doggies in our hearts for us? Yes, little buddy. 
if we are kind and loving, God sees that and God knows that. And that's what matters most of all. And the youngest one became king. Yes, and the youngest one became the greatest king of Israel. Woohoo! The Bible seems like a fun book. It is. Just don't eat it. Okay, I'll try. It's nice to meet you, kids. Have a great day! Bye, kids. Have a blessed week. Good morning, Zion Church. How are you? The uh, response of reading this morning is taken from Psalm 103. And your response is, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Let the people say, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul, who forgives all of your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, let the people say, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all of God's benefits, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like eagles. Let the people say, Bless the Lord, O my soul.
And will you open your pew Bibles first to the Gospel of Mark, the fourth chapter. We will be reading from the fourth chapter, verses 26 through 34, as Jesus talks about the kingdom of heaven and what the kingdom of heaven is like. Give you all a moment to open up. If you're at home, you're welcome to find a Bible and open up as well. Starting with verse 26, if you are ready to hear the word of the Lord, will you please say amen? Amen. With verse 26 we hear, Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and would rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow, and he does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk and then the head and then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe at once, he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed. When sown upon the ground, it is the smallest of the seeds on earth, and yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make their nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it, and he did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Now flip into the Old Testament. We are going to read our Old Testament reading today as well. From 1 Samuel chapter 16, we will read the first 13 verses. Again, if you are ready to hear the word of the Lord, will you please say amen? Amen. Starting with verse 1. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him for being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out, and I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord and invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. And Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably, I have come the sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. And when they came, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on the outward appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. And then Jesse made Shema pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all of your sons here? And Jesse said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. And he sent and brought him, and now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, rise and anoint him, for this is the one. And then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. And Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you say go we will go if you say wait we will wait if you say step out on the water and they say it can't be done we'll 
fix our eyes on you and we will come your ways are higher than our ways and the plans that you have laid are good and true if you call us to the fire you will not withdraw your hand. We'll gaze into the flames and look for you. If you say go, we will go. If you say say it can't be done, we'll fix our eyes on you and we will come. Your ways are higher than our ways, and the plans that you have laid are good and true. Will you join with me in a moment of prayer? Holy and loving God, we turn to you this morning. We turn to you above all else. We turn to you. We have faith in you, Lord. Even when this world is full of chaos, even when there is violence and hatred and anger in this world, Lord, we turn to you and you are a God of love. You are here with us and you bless us. So, Lord, I ask that you bless us in this place. Bless us, bless the words of our mouths and the thoughts of our minds so that all that we do and all that we say can be holy and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Through Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. So I, I love our two readings today. This was one of those days where I couldn't choose just one reading. I usually try to choose just one because I don't want it to get too eclectic. I don't want us to have mixed different messages going on. But I actually think that these two readings go together quite nicely. Let's think about our readings that we have. First, we have the Gospel of Mark, the fourth chapter. And in the Gospel of Mark, we learn about seed that's scattered. And Jesus says that that's like the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven as we know it. That's like the kingdom of heaven. Seed is scattered and it grows in unexpected places. And then we also have in 1 Samuel, we'll get back to the Gospel of Mark in just a minute, but then we have in 1 Samuel, I think a, a favorite story of kids, especially the favorite story of little siblings. I think that little siblings really love this story in 1 Samuel as we have King David who is anointed the next king of Israel. By the way, we could talk about it more. We don't have time to. Saul was still king of Israel, and Saul did not know that this was going on, but Saul had let power and anger get to his head, and so he was no longer the one that God wanted leading the people. And so God sent Samuel out to anoint a new king of Israel, and I love how Samuel, who is this prophet, is just like the rest of us. Samuel sees the first son, this, this big, you know, strappingly, you know, muscular, kind of probably handsome handsome man who comes out and Samuel looks at this big man and Samuel's like, oh, clearly this is the one that God's going to have the next, be the next king of Israel. Like, 
clearly this big, strong man is who God has chosen. And God's like, uh, no, Samuel, Mm-mm. that's not the one that I've chosen. And then he shows the next son who's also big and strong and mighty. And God's like, nope, Samuel, still have not chosen that one. And it goes all the way down the line until finally Samuel's like, hey, Jesse, you got any more kids you hiding on me? And Jesse's like, well, well, I got one, but he's the one keeping the sheep. Like, he's the, the little boy. He's, he's the one out keeping the sheep. You know, well, what do you want to see him for? And Samuel's like, well, let's just bring him. Like, we're not eating until you bring your son Jesse to me. By the way, they're having a feast. Think about this. They're having a feast. Jesse's invited all of his sons, except for the one who's stuck out keeping the sheep. They're all going to have a feast without Jesse. Do you understand that? They're going to have a huge feast without the younger one, the youngest one, who I love how he's described as Rudy. I imagine these cute little red cheeks, you know, and, and, and it says that he has beautiful eyes. Like, I imagine this cute boy who's out there keeping the sheep. He's not even invited to this big feast until Samuel says, we're not eating until you go and get Jesse. And then he go, or until you go and get David. And he goes and get da- gets David. He, Jesse goes and gets his youngest son. He gets David and brings him forward until Samuel is finally like, this is the one. This is the one that God has chosen. This is the next king of Israel. Samuel is told by God to choose the most unexpected of the sons, to choose the most unlikely of the sons, and to anoint him the next king king of Israel, because that's how our God works. Our God always chooses the most unexpected people in the most unexpected ways to be in positions that God wants them to be. God always makes the most unexpected choices. Look at our entire Bible. Do you realize that God flips everything upside down? Oh, it's the oldest son who's supposed to be choosing, uh, chosen. That's okay, I'm going to choose the youngest one. Oh, you know, the Messiah should come as a, as a mighty king. You know what, people? I'm going to give you the Messiah as an innocent little baby. God is all about flipping things on upside down and making the unexpected things happen. I will tell you, if you told me when I was in elementary school that I would be up here preaching in front of people every single Sunday, I would have told you that you were crazy. (laughs) Like, I would have been like, what in the world are you even thinking? Like, I loved going to church. I loved, I I grew up Episcopalian, so I got to sit, like, up, you know, on the chancel in my brown robe with with my wooden cross and and with my candle lighter. I loved being there instead of, instead of in Sunday school. I couldn't wait until I was eight years old so I could be an acolyte like my big siblings. I would sit up there for the whole entire service as an acolyte, But if you wanted me to talk in front of people, if you wanted me to talk in front of adults when I was a kid, I would have told you that you were out of your mind. So if you want to know for a fact that God chooses unexpected people to do unexpected things, believe me, I am proof of that. I would have never expected that God would have chosen me who was terrified to talk in front of people to do this not just once, not just twice, but every single week. It's just amazing to me how God works in unexpected ways. But let's go back to the Gospel of Mark. Let's again think of the the Gospel of Mark, this fourth chapter, a reading about seed. And now you can read more than just what we read. You can read earlier on in the fourth chapter. Jesus is continuously talking about what the kingdom of God or, or the kingdom of heaven is like. And he's giving all of these illustrations, all of these parables about what the kingdom of God is like. And in all of these parables, Jesus uses seed as an example. The kingdom of heaven is like seed that's scattered and it grows in unexpected places. Now I'm going to tell you, I have a, a bird feeder next to our house. And this bird feeder is filled with seed, mostly sunflower seeds, but we add in other stuff as well. And the birds, usually all different birds. You know, I love these bird feeders. Ron knows all about this. He's got all sorts of bird feeders. And, you know, I love watching all the birds come and and eat from the feeder. And a lot of them come and they stay there and eat. But apparently some of them come and and get like a mouthful of seed and, and fly away and eat that seed elsewhere. And you know what those birds that grab that seed and fly away do? They scatter seed. Apparently, some of these birds like to go to these rocks that we have next to the pond. Zach, you want to show us the next picture? And this is what's happening right now. We have these rocks next to our pond. And of course, I wanted to weed these things, but my husband will not let me. I did just weed a lilac bush apparently a little while ago. I know I'm terrible. He told me I'm not allowed to weed anymore. 
Um, so <laughs> I thought it was a weed. Uh, here, look right here. This is what I'm not allowed to weed. And I realize that this is exactly what Jesus is talking about. Seed that is scattered in unexpected places. These three things go- growing right here, they're sunflowers. Those three things are sunflowers because some bird must have gone into the feeder, taken a mouthful of seed, and, and gone over to the rocks to break them open and to eat. Only all of those seeds did not end up in those birds' bellies. Some of those seeds seeds ended up in the soil under the rocks, and look what has happened. Sunflowers are growing in the most unexpected places. That is what the kingdom of God is like. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is like seed that's scattered and grows in unexpected places. Yesterday I had the honor, uh, or not yesterday, Friday, I had the honor of talking to a whole bunch of people that came in for our dinner And I had one person or one family that came over and talked to me, and I guarantee you they're watching online. So hi, friends that are watching with us online, uh, because they always watch online. But they came over and they talked to me. They've been watching online with us basically throughout the whole entire pandemic, and they never miss a Sunday, and they'll be here with us in person when things are a little bit safer for their family. But they came over and, and they talked to me, and it was wonderful to hear that they're worshiping with us online. And I realized something. I realized that when the pandemic hit and we were forced to stream our services online, something that we wanted to do, but it's like a steep learning curve. I mean, think about how long it took us to get to where we are now. There's so much learning that has to be involved, but the pandemic got us to a place where we could do this better. And you know what happened? The seed began to spread. The seed spread from one person to another. And when you said, hey, come and and watch my church online with me, and and your friends did it. And I'm looking at a bunch of you who are here because of some connection to the SBCA right now. And I joked at one point, I'm like, it's like the whole SBCA. It it moved farther away, and yet all the people keep coming to our church. It's like soon enough, I feel like we're going to be like the church of the SBCA. Is this accurate to all of you guys who I'm looking at right now? And you know how it happens? It happens because people go to work, and and they're living good and faithful lives, and and they're being good and faithful Christians. Our church members are going out into this world being good and faithful people, and and somehow their faith is evident to others, and and somehow others ask them, well, well, what church do you go to? I want to, yeah, and and they're like, I want to know more about your church. What's this church that you go to that that makes you feel so fulfilled? What's this church that you go to that you talk about with a smile on your face? What's this church that you go to that's teaching you all of this? And, And they get all of this news and suddenly all of you here, you go out into the world, you go out into your workplaces, you go out into your neighborhoods. I know some of you have come here because your neighbors welcomed you. You go to Wegmans. I know Ron's brought people to church from Wegmans before. You know, you go out into the world and somehow you talk about your church and you talk about your faith community and suddenly that talking becomes a little infectious in a good way (laughs) and that seed spreads and before you know it your friends are here in this church along with you when Jesus talks about seed that is scattered and grows the kingdom of God that is exactly what Jesus is talking about. Now, I also want us to think about how seed scatters and grows in unexpected places. You know, I love telling ch- stories about our church members, especially when our church members are such good Christians. So I got to tell this story and embarrass one of you today. because I got permission, I promise, I got permission to embarrass them. Uh, Just as I try to do, I'm getting better. I try to get permission before talking about all of you up here. But I want to embarrass Jeff Quinton just for a second. So (laughs) he laughed, so it's a good thing. So on Friday at our dinner, we had our our awesome barbecue dinner, and and Jeff had a friend who came to the dinner. But honestly, as John said, by 4.50, we were sold out of any extra tickets that were not sold pre-sale. It was amazing. And Jeff had a friend who came to the dinner, and that friend wanted to buy a dinner, but we were all sold out. It was after that time. And that friend had just learned some heartbreaking news, and they were just really upset. You know, she came here just shortly after hearing this heartbreaking news, and she's like, oh, I just... I just wanted to get a dinner and go home. And Jeff, being this, this is good. I love our Christians at work in this world. Jeff says, take mine. Take my dinner. I'll find something else to eat. You take my dinner. Take this food. You need it. You sit and you eat. I don't even care if you pay for it. Take this dinner and go and eat. 
And I told Jeff, when Jeff told me this story afterwards, I said, you just did ministry. Right there in that moment, you had a friend in need and you cared for them physically by feeding them and spiritually by being there for them. Good job, Jeff. That is ministry. That's doing ministry out there in the world when we care for people physically, when we care for people spiritually in the most unexpected places. Do you know that the majority of ministry that any of us will do, me included in this world, happens in unexpected places, at unexpected times, in unexpected ways, when we do not expect it at all. That's how God works. That is how we grow the kingdom of heaven. We grow the kingdom of heaven by doing unexpected ministry in unexpected ways at unexpected times. That's why Jesus is talking about all this seed that is scattered and then it grows. But as we talk about all this seed in the kingdom of heaven, I think that we need to make sure we understand exactly what Jesus is talking about biblically. So we're going to talk about something that I've been going over for the past six months till hopefully it's fully ingrained in all of your heads. That we, here we go. Zach's on top of this. You guys, raise your hand if you've seen this image enough times lately this past year. This is an image that we need to understand if we want to understand what scattering seed for the kingdom of heaven means. I'm going to go over it super briefly because I've gone over this like five times in the last six months. Maybe four? I don't want to exaggerate too much. Okay, so right here, this green circle right here, I'm trying to make my visual a little bit better. The green circle right here is the earth. That's why I made it green. The green circle is the earth. And you know what? This earth is a wonderful place. It's the home that we've been given. But on this earth, there is both good and there is evil. Lately, I've realized I can't even go on Facebook, by the way, which is sad because I want to see people's pictures and everything, but everybody's just so busy arguing on there. I don't even want to go on there anymore because you know what? There's good and there's evil in this world. And sometimes we attack each other. That's how this world works. We live in this world where there's good and where there's evil. And and everything is just kind of a mess sometimes. You know what I mean? Sometimes this world is a mess. That's where we live right now. That blue circle right there, that's the kingdom of heaven. That's the kingdom of God that Jesus is talking about. The kingdom of God is what Jesus is saying. is like seed that scatters and then it grows in the unexpected places. But let's imagine that we had a linear line going right through the middle there. And that cross that's there right where the blue circle first, you know, is is right there in front of the green. That's when Jesus entered into this world. When Jesus entered into this world, he introduced all of us to the kingdom of heaven, to the kingdom of God. He planted the original seed of the kingdom of heaven. He planted the seed that gave us hope. He gave us, planted the seed that gave us promise in one of our readings from 2 Corinthians corinthians today this week we learn that the holy spirit this is from the apostle paul he says that the holy spirit is our promise for the kingdom of heaven the holy spirit is all of our promise for the kingdom of heaven that promise started when jesus entered into this world so even though we are in this already but not yet stage even though we are still here on this earth we are are living on this earth where we can live where we can die where we can mess up where there's good where there's evil we are living this life on this earth and yet we have that seed of the kingdom of heaven within us We have that taste of the kingdom of heaven within us. You know what I mean? We have that promise of the Holy Spirit for the kingdom of heaven that is within us. Do you know what I mean, friends? This is not rhetorical. Do you know what I mean? Do you feel that taste of the kingdom of heaven? Do you feel that seed planted inside of you for the kingdom of heaven? That's why we're in this in-between time. And so what we need to do as Christians... What we need to do, our job as Christians, is to go out there into the world and spread the seed. Spread the seed of hope. Spread the seed of joy. Spread the seed of love. That's our job while we're in this, like, in-between time. We need to go out and we need to scatter the seed everywhere we go. Everywhere we go, we need to scatter the seed of the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, we're not the kind of people that usually go knocking on doors saying, have you met Jesus? That's not really our thing. Raise your hand if you feel comfortable doing that. No hands. Exactly what I thought. That's not our kind of thing. But you know what? We can spread the seed in different ways. 
I don't think any of you at the SBCA went knocking on any doors saying, have you met Jesus? I don't think that's what's happened. I just think that you guys were good people of faith. And everybody saw, and they wanted a piece of it. I think that that's how this works. I think that's how we spread the seed for the kingdom of heaven. That's our job. It's not just my job as your pastor. It's your jobs as well. Our jobs is to go out into the world and spread little seeds for the kingdom of heaven. And here's the amazing time, the amazing thing. Sometimes you scatter seed and you don't think it's going to take root. Sometimes you scatter seed. You try to give people hope. You pro- try to give people joy. You, you try to give them a little taste of the kingdom of heaven. You try to give them a little, a little bit of the Holy Spirit. You go out this in the world and you scatter the seed and you try and you think there is no way that that seed is going to grow. You think there is no way that that seed's going to turn into anything, and then suddenly you hear a story. Some, suddenly somebody's heart has changed. Do you know how many people have told me that they used to be atheists, and then suddenly they found out that there were Christians like us, Christians that are a little less judgy than our brothers and sisters out there, you know, Christians that are trying just to be the best, most loving people we can be in this world. And suddenly the idea of God didn't seem so impossible. Isn't that amazing? Sometimes we go out, we scatter the seed of hope, and it sprouts in the most unexpected places, in the most unexpected ways, at the most unexpected times. Our job, friends, is to go scatter that seed. Scatter that seed of hope. Scatter that seed of promise. Scatter that seed of joy. Scatter that seed of love. Go out into this world and scatter so much seed. And maybe something will sprout in unexpected places. And let's join in a moment of prayer. Holy and loving God, we turn to you, Lord. You are the one who's above all things. You are the one who is more powerful than we can ever imagine. You are the one who sends us out into this world to scatter seeds of hope, to scatter seeds of promise. Bless us all, Lord, as we go out there into this world. Bless us all, Lord, as we try to do your will. Bless us all, Lord, so that we can scatter seed in the most unexpected places. And we pray this and every prayer through Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now is the time for our tithes and offerings. Please place envelopes in the basket in the back of the sanctuary or give online. Thank you. With a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done. And let us pray together. Gracious God, may this act of giving transform our hearts and our minds. May you bless these gifts and use them to do your will. Through Christ we pray. Amen.
Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. of salvation he rose and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave so take me as you find me all my fears and failures fill my life again I give my life to follow everything I believe in now I surrender. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing. For the glory of the risen King, Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Now go forth with the blessing of God. Go forth with the love of Christ in your heart. Go forth and scatter seed. I can't talk. Scatter seed for the kingdom of heaven. Go forth, be blessed, and be a blessing to all.